Hey guys, my name is Taylor. Welcome to the Gyno Girls YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about IUDs. My goal for this platform is to educate women and men on women's health. So be sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you find it helpful. So what we're going to talk about today is the difference in IUDs. So we have two categories of IUDs. We have a hormonal IUD, which actually has four separate IUDs in that category. We have the Mirena, the Liletta, the Kylina, and the Skyla. For today's video, I'm gonna mainly be talking about the Mirena. They all work the same. There's just some slight differences um, between them. And then we have the non-hormonal IUD, which is the copper IUD called Paragard. So these two IUDs are both very effective against preventing pregnancy. They're both 99% effective, but they work in very different ways. So first we're gonna talk about the uh, Mirena and how that works to prevent pregnancy. So this IUD increases the cervical mucus, which helps prevent the sperm from entering into, um, through the cervix into the uterus. It also prevents women's bodies from ovulating. So if we're not ovulating, we're not releasing an egg, then there is no way for an egg to be fertilized and for us to get pregnant. So again, two ways, by thickening cervical mucus and by preventing ovulation. Now the Paragard works a little different and it does still thicken the cervical mucus, again, to prevent the sperm from entering into the uterus. But because there are no hormones in it, women will still ovulate. The way this prevents pregnancy is by creating inflammation localized within the uterus in the lining of the uterus. So this inflammation makes it a hostile environment for sperm and an egg and for implantation. So again, totally different, but both 99% effective. The Mirena IUD is good for six years, where the copper IUD is actually good for 10 years. They can both, however, be removed at any time. So these type of birth controls are really common for my women who are in between pregnancies. So let's say we have baby number one. We don't want baby number two quite yet, but we're thinking maybe in two, three years, we can put an IUD in and you don't have to wait that six or 10 years to get it removed. We can remove it at two, three years, whenever pregnancy is desired or side effects happen. So that's gonna bring me into how do we insert the IUD. So if you take a look at this model here, this um, is what a uterus will look like. If you see here, this is the cervix. These are the fallopian tubes and you have your ovaries that sit out here. So as you can see, the IUD sits inside the uterine cavity. It's a T-shaped IUD. The reason that it's made in this shape is so it can't get lost. It can't go through a tube here or through a tube here or down because of its shape. So as you see here, we have these strings that hang out of the cervical canal. I get a lot of questions on, is this like a tampon string? No, and the difference is it does not hang out of the vaginal canal. So if we actually take a look at this model here, as you can see, your cervix is up top here, and this is the vaginal canal. So the strings only hang down about one to two inches into the vaginal canal. They will never hang out of the vagina like a tampon. Typically what happens when the ring, um, I'm sorry, the IUD is inserted is that we cut the strings so they coil up around the cervical canal so they don't um, cause pain or discomfort during intercourse. If you have an IUD and you feel like you or your partner are complaining of pain or like a pinching poking sensation, you can always call your GYN and ask them to cut the strings a little shorter. The way that it's inserted is we put a speculum in and we um, open up just like we're doing a regular pelvic exam. We're gonna put some tools through the speculum here. We're going to dilate your cervix, which causes a little bit of cramping. It's uncomfortable, but it feels like a very intense period cramp. So we dilate the cervix, then the IUD gets goes through the cervical canal into the uterus and we pop it in with a little uh, tool. Then we slowly remove the tools, cut the strings, take out the speculum. Again, this is uncomfortable, but you feel more pressure and cramping. You will have a little bleeding, but it isn't anything extremely painful. If you are nervous about the insertion, definitely want to talk to your GYN and we'll walk you through it. 
before we go ahead and we insert an IUD, so our office is a little unique. Um, I don't know if a lot of other offices in the country are in the, so I'm from the Buffalo area. Not a lot of other offices in our area do this. But what we do before we go ahead and we order an IUD and go ahead and insert the IUD, if you've never been pregnant before or had a delivery, we always do a sonogram in the office to measure the size of the uterus. We wanna take a look at the cavity size. If the cavity is too small, we increase the risk of having a perforation or an expulsion. So what a perforation is, is when we go ahead and we insert the IUD, if your uterus is too small to hold that IUD in place, so if we take a look here, if this is too small to fit, when we insert it, we're gonna perforate through the, abdom through the, um, through the top of the uterus and the IUD is gonna go into the abdominal cavity. This creates a lot of pain and we need a surgical removal for the IUD. Now an expulsion, now remember I told you the way that the IUD is shaped, it has this um, T-shape here, so it's created so it doesn't get expelled. But if your uterus is too small and the IUD is too big, sometimes your body can reject it. It can cramp and cramp and you're, you can expel the IUD and it's gonna come out just like this. So we don't want that to happen because a lot of times this can happen when you're bleeding, when you're on a period, if you pass a lot of clots, sometimes you don't know that you've expelled this IUD and we find out when you get pregnant. So we don't want that to happen. So what we do is go ahead and we do a sonogram, non-invasive, it doesn't hurt at all, to make sure that your uterus can hold the IUD. Now what's unique is the copper IUD, which is what I have here. If you take a look, the IUD is wrapped in this um, medical grade copper. This is actually the biggest of the five IUDs. So we have to make sure if this is something that you wanna go with, that it's big enough. The Mirena is the next biggest, and then we have the Skyla and Kylina, which are the smaller of the um, subsets of IUDs. So now that we've inserted the IUD, let's talk a little bit about some side effects. So we have two categories of IUDs, again, the non-hormonal and the hormonal. The non-hormonal IUD is really great for those women who cannot tolerate side effects from a hormonal birth control, or for those women who have bleeding and clotting disorders, for those women who have um, PEs, which is a clot in the lung, DVT, which is a clot, a blood clot in the leg, those women who have had TIAs, which is a mini stroke or a stroke. So these subcategory of women cannot have hormones in their body. This is where the Paragard is a great option. So unlike the Mirena, which has hormones in it, the Mirena is going to help to regulate your period in addition to preventing pregnancy. Majority of women who get the Mirena IUD stop getting a period altogether after about three months. So we get a lot of period control with this. The Mirena IUD is great for women who have very heavy, painful, crampy periods. They pass a lot of clots. They're bleeding through their tampons and their pads. They're missing days out of the uh, month for work, for school, for social events because their periods are so bad. That's where the Mirena IUD is a great option. Because it does have hormones, it can come with hormonal side effects. So besides women stopping their periods, although this is considered a side effect, some women think it's kind of nice to not get their period, um, we also have some instances of potential weight gain and mood disturbances. The Mirena IUD only contains progesterone. It does not contain estrogen. Sometimes progesterone can cause mood disturbances in some women, such as worsening depression, worsening anxiety, just ups and downs throughout the month. So some women cannot tolerate that. So this is not a great option for women who are already suffering with mental illnesses. If this, um, falls into your subset or your category, you may be better suited for the Paragard IUD. 
I do see every once in a while some patients cannot tolerate the mood issues with the IUD, so we go ahead and then we remove it. Otherwise, you can have some pain and some cramping and some irregular bleeding for an average of six to eight weeks after insertion. Once your body gets used to it, that tends to go away. Other than that, the Mirena IUD is pretty well tolerated. Now we go to the Copper IUD. Now again, I said this doesn't have hormones, but that does not mean it doesn't come with side effects. Because it creates inflammation within the uterus and within the lining of the uterus, this IUD can actually make your periods heavier. You can cramp more. You can be in more pain. You can pass bigger clots. So if somebody has really heavy periods to begin with, I always warn them about this you want to make sure that you're not going to create worsening periods for them. That's one of the most common side effects with a Paragard IUD. And if I have to go ahead and remove an IUD or Paragard, it's mostly because of this issue. Women cannot tolerate the bleeding. Now, this does not happen to everyone. So I don't want this to scare you with the IUD, but it's something to think about. Sometimes with the copper, this can actually create a zinc deficiency in women. If you have a zinc deficiency, it can lead to some hair loss and some hair thinning, cramping, and heavier bleeding. So I always tell my woman, before we go ahead and remove the Paragard, let's do an over-the-counter zinc supplement for about uh, a month to two months and see if you notice a difference. If you don't, then again, we can go ahead and we can remove the IUD. So now that I've talked about the side effects, I'm wondering if you guys have noticed any issues or side effects that I've mentioned and think it may potentially be related to your birth control. If you do, comment and we can um, talk about this in a future video. Be sure to subscribe and follow my YouTube channel if you guys found this educational. Next uh, topic, we're going to be talking about the Anovera birth control. This is a new annual birth control ring. So this is a really great option and this is actually what, if you take a look in this model here, it's what this ring is here. So we're going to be talking about that next. Again, be sure to like and subscribe.